My name's Connor Woodman. I used to be a market analyst in the City of London, working on deals worth hundreds of millions of pounds. But I'd had enough of e-business done on a computer screen, so I quit. I'm really happy. I want to get out and test myself in real markets, haggling face to face with hardened traders. 12,000, oh, it's a bit too low, too low. 32,200? Yeah. Yes. Got it. So forget the economic doom and gloom. I think I can make money and have a great time trading my way around the world. It's the way people used to do business, buying something and travelling with it and selling it in another place. This is exactly what it's all about. I've taken 25 grand from the sale of my flat to invest in all kinds of products. Animal, there's thousands of camels here. There's camels over there, over there, over there. Everywhere you look, there's camels. Mineral. <laughs> Deal. What have I done? And vegetable. Tastes like being up for breakfast. Oh. <laughs> 75 oh. feet! <laughs> this has got so bad. <laughs> just doing my head in. It's a journey that'll take me across four continents and 16 countries. With any luck, I'll make some serious money. If it goes wrong, I'll lose the lot. I'm starting my journey in one of the toughest markets in the world, Africa. This is a massive continent. I'll offer him $750 for this. Where a vast range of commodities are grown and traded. I'm going to travel from the north to the south, looking for gaps in the market that I can profit from. I would leave you the contact, the chain that I establish. Oh, that sounds cool. It's the start of a journey that'll go from Africa to Asia, the Far East, South America and then home. I have a rough plan but I've set up very little in advance. I want to be free to follow my instincts from one trade to the next. I'm going to throw myself in at the deep end by trying to trade along one of the world's most ancient trade routes. I'm going to trade camels and I'm going to do it here in the Sahara Desert. I've come to the Sudan, outside the capital, Khartoum, and I've had a baptism of fire. Straight away I can tell I'm going to have to adjust to a different way of doing things. I've already been ripped off, I've been lied to, I've been taxed, I've been fined, and that's just getting my passport stamped. It's no wonder that the traders that I've come here to do business with have got a reputation for being some of the toughest and most cutthroat in the whole world. Sudan has the second biggest population of camels in Africa. It exports over 150,000 every year, and I want in on the act. Why do people buy camels? What are they used for? For meat, for Libya and Egypt. They come to Sudan and buy the camels here because they're cheaper here than in, than in Egypt. I've employed a local guide, Adam, who's going to help me get to grips with the basics of camel trading. Assalamu alaikum. He's taken me to the Khartoum livestock market. The camels here are sold for meat all over North Africa. I might not know much about the trade yet, but as a former market analyst, I'm used to doing my homework. Today, I'm not going to buy camels. I've come for a more important commodity, information. My camel is going to die, please. <laughs> 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 Please, my camel is about to die. Please buy him before he dies. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> this is my chance to learn all that I can about camels. <laughs> but against my better judgment, I get sucked into a negotiation. Yeah, it's about it's cost about. Uh, uh, $600. $600 for this yeah. camel, yeah. Yeah, $600. Yeah. yeah. I know, and, and he says $600, but maybe it's a, we can get a better price than $600, I think. Yeah. This is unnegotiable. Uh, 
Everything's negotiable. Don't be, don't be daft. Why was it non-negotiable? No discount. Just don't need discount. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. I can see when it comes to making deals here, it's going to be a bit more difficult than I thought. OK. This is Mohammed Hassan, one of the most experienced traders here. I want to see what he thinks of my big plan. Can I, can I explain, can I explain to him what, what I'm thinking? This is, this is North Africa, this is Egypt coming down here, and this is the border with Sudan. Yeah? So what I want to do is to buy, is to buy camels here in Khartoum and then take them up over the border all the way up there to Cairo. What does he think of this plan? It's a successful, success uh, plan. Successful plan. Yeah, so it's a good plan. In his head, in his head, it's good. Yeah, it's yeah, a good yeah. plan. Because okay. uh, many people is uh, using as uh, camel trader from Khartoum to to Egypt. And that's because there's a good market for camel meat in Egypt. They all looked at me really funny for there for a second. I just realised I just dipped my left hand in the in the pot. <laughs> Mohammed says the affluent Egyptians will pay double for a good fat Sudanese camel. But as this is my first trade, I'm starting small. If I can get six camels for two and a half thousand pounds, I could double my money in Cairo, making a tidy profit. There's a constant flow of camels following the trade route. They're sold from village to village, with each dealer making a small profit along the way. Okay. He's walked all the way from Kordofan, which is a 20-day walk south of here, with all these camels. He's got another 10 days to walk. One of the most straightforward ways of making money is just cut out the middleman. If I buy camels and take them straight to Cairo, I'll keep all the profit that normally gets shared between five or six dealers along the route. My only expense, other than the camels themselves, will be the hire of the truck. You can carry camels on this truck? Mm. Yeah. $300. $300. What if I offer him $200? Yeah. I've set myself a deadline. I've got until midday tomorrow to buy six camels, then the truck will take us to Egypt. And there's a market tomorrow in a place called Dongola. See you in Dongola, mate. So day one, I came here because I wanted to practice negotiating with, with the, the toughest traders that I could think of, and, I, and I, I'm convinced I'm in the right place, that the camel traders in the market here are exactly that. So I'm really excited to see how camels actually get traded and to, to really to, to go toe to toe with these guys fills me with a bit of dread but it really fills me with a sense of excitement and so I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a good day. It's market day in Dongola. Today's the day when I go toe to toe with Sudan's camel dealers. It's been said that the pursuit of, of money is the root of all evil. I couldn't disagree more. I think without trade and without that pursuit of wealth, no one would know anything beyond their own front door. Going out and trying to find someone to do business with is the whole reason that people interact. I'm here to buy six camels. A local would pay anything from four to around $800 for a good one. There's Thousands of camels here. There's camels over there, over there, over there. There's cam everywhere you look. There's camels. Hopefully, I can find a few of my own. It's all about negotiating these prices down. I've got to get these camels for an average of six hundred dollars, I think. The two that were yoked together, the white one and the brown one. How much? How much for this pair of camels? How much for this pair? The market owner says he's got some good fat camels for sale. No, this is no good. I can't sell. Can't sell this for meat. Yeah. Small, medium, and fat. He's fat. Yes. Yes. He's good. One thousand dollars for both camels.